Good evening, YouTube. Welcome back once again to another episode of The Edward. I am your host, Eddie. And in tonight's episode, I will be doing my episode review and recap video regarding episode two of season five of Falling Skies called Hunger Pains. Now, before I begin, I must warn you that if you have not seen the most recent episode of Falling Skies, or if you're uh, behind a couple episodes or one season, do not watch or listen to this video as I will be discussing massive, massive spoilers, especially regarding the newest video and then uh, the newest episode and then the episode prior to this, the season five premiere. So you have been warned, but those of you who have watched it, keep on watching. <laughs> so uh, picking up right where the first episode left off, uh, you know, Tom found that bug, the me metallic looking bug that he swatted on his neck and they kept it so they could keep it for observation. But this episode was about finding food because, you know, they're pinned down in these ruins basically and this massive swarm of skitters is seen approaching and it's like the skitters technically aren't attacking because they seem disjointed and disorganized, but they're all definitely swarming towards the second mass. And, you know, even like uh, Sarah comments how some of them are even eating each other. So this is most likely a massive herd of skitters that's disoriented and uh, without guide or direction. And they're just starving, like starving as much as the humans are looking for food. And, uh, you know, they it makes them attack the ruins and the second mass holds them off. But unfortunately, during the battle, somebody shoots a rocket launcher at a skitter that makes it past the wall into the ruins and unfortunately, they hit the one uh, food depository where all of their food and supplies were. Well, mostly their food. A uh, few supplies, but it was all of their food. So now they've got to find another source of food. And they are so incredibly famished, desperate, exhausted. Everybody's disoriented and dehydrated. This uh, girl, uh, Ellen... I Ellen or Helen, I believe her name is, uh, you know, she's about Matt's age and, you know, she's looking for food and offers to share some with him when she finds some. And then she eventually faints from a lack of sugar in her blood. So she's possibly a diabetic or she's just most likely like the rest of our characters, extremely, extremely hungry. So when Ben discovers some canned goods and he's showing them to uh, Hal and Weaver, Weaver notices that the distributors, the food company with this particular can of food, is only one county over and they're, uh, and they're awfully close to it. So they send a small search party of uh, Sarah, Pope, and uh, Ben and Maggie, since Men Ben and Maggie will be able to uh, help them detect danger with the spikes in their backs so they'll know if skitters are nearby. So those four go on a trek for food. And meanwhile, the Skitters have not stopped their attack on the ruins where the second mass currently resides. It's like an endless surge of Skitters just keeps coming at them from all directions. And they're constantly blowing them away. And it's a great battle scene. You know, it's a great, it's a great episode. It's really fun. You know, it's showing our characters kicking ass against the Skitters. But uh, what's interest, you know, what's a little concerning is that Anthony and I... Totally forgot to mention this in my last video for my review of episode uh, one of season five. Poor Denny. Uh, she was the uh, spiked girl who became friends with Ben in season three. And I could have sworn she actually died at the end of season four. But apparently she survived season four. And there she here she was in season five until the towards the end of the episode of the season premiere where she is ripped in half in front of Anthony who stands by helpless. Well, not completely helpless, but he does get blood splattered on him, her blood, and he just ah opens fire on the skitters who ripped her apart as they were uh, scouring the hall as they were, you know, patrolling the hallway of this abandoned building. She's ripped apart and it completely devastates Anthony. He probably feels like he's let down his friend and his comrade and he's in a really, really bad way. In fact, I think this is the worst we have ever seen Anthony. And this is probably even worse than going way back to season one when his buddy Click was killed by Pope's gang. 
you know, he was pretty distraught about that, but nowhere near as bad as poor Denny. You know, Denny really rattled him because we see him during the battle. He's just going apeshit on the skitters and it causes, you know, Tom to become concerned for him. And he has to actually stop him from firing on the skitters because he has one like pulled up to him with his pistol going, you like that? Bang, 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 bang. And he was just going ape shit on the skitter. And Tom's like, whoa, 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 Anthony, 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 relax, it's dead. And, uh, you know, Anthony's like, no, no, it's not dead yet. It's not dead yet. And he's just completely, you know, he's just full of so much rage and anger. And Tom is actually happy that he's tapped into his primal rage like he was telling the second mass to do in the last episode about how they need to get angry to really fight back and survive. But at the same time, he's got to keep somewhat of a level head so he doesn't kill himself or somebody else. So... The four uh, characters go on the trek for food. Meanwhile, uh, the rest of the second mass is just about uh, keeping their location, holding their position until uh, the food party arrives, hopefully with food. And during this, uh, Weaver is walking around, Tom is walking around, and he overhears this commotion happening in a tent. And he goes, you know, he pulls the tent aside and he sees some of the men, including Anthony, who are taking turns with a two by four or a baseball bat. And they're just beating the hell out of this captive skitter that they uh, took alive during the, one of the assaults. And the skitter is just screeching and, you know, trying to protect itself from the men who are beating it senseless with bats. Like they're taking turns one at a time, just, you know, whacking away at it, not killing it. Well, they're slowly killing it because it's bleeding and it's wounded. And normally Tom, Mr. Voice and Reason of Falling Skies, you know, the decent guy who's got strong moral values and does the right thing tries to do the right thing he actually kind of tilts his head and nods and looks approvingly at what at what's happening he's it's like he agrees with this brutality that his men are inflicting on the skitter he's like mm, okay all right i'll allow this and he just goes on watching until he notices weaver pro who probably followed him in comes in and he looks confused and the last person to beat the skitter uh senselessly is anthony until you know he's just beating it so much with the baseball bat where it still isn't dead yet and it's making these horrible screaming screeching noises until weaver's fine finally has enough of it pulls out his uh nine millimeter and just goes right in its head and anthony's kind of huffing at him like <laughs> and then weaver lectures kind of scolds the men for saying you know we're still under siege out there we've got lots of there's a lot of stuff to do we have to maintain and defend the fence defend the perimeter we have guns and weapons to clean return to your posts and he looks surprisingly at tom like you were okay with this? Like, you allowed this? That's the look he gives him. And then later, he will actually go, he actually goes up to him and says, what was that back there? Tom's like, what was what? That back there, what was that? You just allowed the men to beat that skitter senseless. And, you know, it was a huge waste of time. That's what Weaver was mostly angry about, what a big waste of time it was. And Tom actually said, you know, I thought that at first too, but then I realized that they're doing exactly what I told them to do is to tap into that primal rage, that anger, that fear. And it's what's keeping them alive and keeping them strong and fighting. And Weaver partially agrees to that, but at the same time, he, uh, states that it is so incredibly important to maintain order and discipline amongst the men and to, you know, not allow them to become like full on savages. And Tom partially agrees, but it's just interesting to see how the Tom was leaning towards more the sides of violence instead of towards the size of uh, peace or uh, reason or a uh, uh, re or reason like Weaver was. So we cut back to our food, our, our food search party and they managed to find this enormous warehouse and it looks like it's been pretty much ransacked and only other few other goods remain. But fortunately they find a whole pallets and pallets, boxes and boxes of food in this fenced in little area. So as uh, Pope and uh, Ben are loading up the truck and I like this scene because Pope is giving Ben shit for the love triangle between him, Hal, and Maggie, but he's also trying to give him advice at the same time, but he's not being clear about it. And then Sarah's doing the same. 
uh, for Maggie as they're getting the food ready. And she jokingly suggests a three-way, but she was partially joking, but probably serious too. But it's like, uh, you know, the two girls and the two guys trying to help the other one figure out their uh, love triangle situation. So I liked that. But when they return to the cage, it find, they find that somebody has locked in Maggie and Sarah. And when Pope and Ben get there, this girl with a, a machine gun points at him saying, drop your weapons. And then I'm like, oh, great. A hostile survivor or a, a survivor who's part of a bigger hostile group or something. But uh, it's actually just one girl. She locks them in and she says she can't let them take all the, her food or their food because she says this place has kept us alive for three months and will need it to keep us alive a lot longer. And then they're like, what do you mean by us? And then a banging is heard uh, behind them in the cage with inside the ca in the food cage with them are these two wood doors with a lock on it. And the doors are banging and there's this horrible screeching, screaming sound. And it's like, oh... She has a skitter or some skitters locked up back there. And whether or not they're her captives, we're not sure yet. But then it becomes painfully clear that it's a skitterized human like we saw last season. Because it's making human-like and animal-like sounds. And Ben and Maggie quickly realize it's a skitterized human. And the girl insists that it's her brother and that she is uh, just keeping him alive so they can find a way to bring him back. Because he actually found his way back to her when he escaped his little uh, skitter war party. And he's mostly skitter, but parts of her brother still exist within him. So Maggie makes a super false promise saying, if you, she says, if you let us out and take our food, you can come back with us to our camp, you and your brother, and we will fix your brother, I promise. And Pope Sarah and Ben are all looking at each other, exchanging looks like, uh, we can't do that. We can't fix skitterized humans. They're they're hopeless they're done for but the girl who's obviously so desperate to save her brother and maggie who's so desperate and hungry to get back to her people and get her friends out of there uh and they know that or she knows everybody back at the second mass is starving you know they obviously get her to agree because the next scene cuts to them the second mass and Kochi's fighting off the aliens uh, on the wall and keep them out of the center of the ruins until the food truck arrives and it's our four characters well our, our five characters and uh, they start getting swarmed by skitters as well just an endless storm of skitters like this like I said earlier this episode featured the most skitters I have ever seen in one episode and I'm looking back at all of the other seasons like seasons one through four, and I cannot honestly picture a time when I have seen that many skitters in an episode of Falling Skies before, except this one. So, wow. But they finally get them out, and then mean, and uh, finally, you know, they, they, you know, they're they're trapped and they're surrounded, and these skitters don't stop coming until finally this miniature little ship that looks like a small handmade beamer comes out, and it's uh, our old buddy Dinga, Digon or Dingon. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that name, but you guys know what I'm talking about. It's the black guy with the super thick African, South African accent. And he's the one who actually helped the second mass escape the ghetto camps, uh, the prison ghetto camps way back in season four. And he stayed with them ever since. And he's kind of like a jack of all trades. I can invent stuff type of guy. And he creates this little miniature ship and it acts as like a skitter bomb. Because once he presses a couple buttons on his remote controls, it sends out this wave that knocks out most most of the skitters like a few of them remain but it's only like four or five that remain but the rest of them are wiped out by this like homemade skitter bomb that uh ding and dingon des designed it was pretty cool and while he was working on that earlier in the episode before this scene you know matt comes up to him and uh he's telling him about how he's worried about his new friend ellen and how he kind of brushes her off as saying well she's not really my friend i just met her today but Dingon can see that he's starting to like her and he tells him this funny story about what happened to him when he was a little older than Matt saying, I met this girl on this fishing boat and we had a good time and I helped her reel in this baby Mako shark and I really liked the way she laughed. And he's like, bottom line, Matt, I've lived a good life. I got married and had a family, but I often thought to myself, I wonder what would have happened if I had told her, I love your laugh. And then Matt walks out inspired. 
And then so finally the characters show up and, you know, they everybody's cheering like, yay, we got food, a truck full of food. They open it up and they see the girl there and Tom's extremely welcoming. He's like, welcome to the second mass, welcome. But behind her is a wood crate that's locked and secured and it starts shaking and something starts growling and all the second mass immediately point their guns at it. And Maggie and Ben quickly explain to Weaver and Tom, yeah, well, she wouldn't really let us leave unless we promised her that we'd bring her and her brother back. And I told her we could fix her brother and I know we can't. Sorry. And so they would secure her brother in the cage. But what I would have thought might what might have happened, I was like, ooh, could this happen? Could this happen? Is that while the skitters were swarming the truck, I thought it would be so cool if they had opened the back of the truck and the skitterized human, the girl's brother, like broke out like Hulk, like, and started fighting the skitters, just ripping them apart left and right. I think that would have looked really, really cool. Unfortunately, that did not happen. But at the same time, even if it had happened, it would have been implied that the de that the skitterized human was fully in control of his actions and could be trusted. Where in this case, they were quick to establish that he could not be trusted and he was more of a wild animal than a human being. So they get him locked up. Anthony and most of the second mass is not pleased that he's there at all. And it's pretty clear that somebody is going to pop him uh, as soon as they get a chance but, uh, you know, that's not the case. And they get the food back. Pope and Sarah have a nice mock little uh, fancy dinner together. Meanwhile, Matt put together a, t a homemade microscope for Anne so she could further study the metallic bug that stung Tom. And as they're looking at it through this homemade microscope, she and Tom, she realizes that it's, it has skitter legs, the wings of a black hornet, which is a skitter with hornet wings um, back from season four. And it has the arms of an Ashveni. And then most terrifying about it, it's got human eyes. And as Tom looks at it, it suddenly springs back to life. And then he and Anne follow it out of the ruins into the woods. And lo and behold, there's a massive, massive pit full of skitters and black hornets. This little bug led them to this pit just outside of the ruins where the second mass is holed up and it's full of skitters and black hornets. So there's definitely tons and tons of them out there and they could easily overrun the second mass, which is what they're setting us up for in the next Sunday's episode. So overall, I really liked this episode. In fact, I think I liked it more than the season five premiere. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed the season premiere, but... This episode really did well. You know, it had some great character moments, fantastic action battle scenes. I really enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to next week's episode as well to see uh, what's to come. So, you know, once again, good job following Skies. That was fun. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode as much as I did. Please feel free to sound off down below. Leave your comments, thoughts, and opinions below. What was your favorite scene? What was your favorite part? What did you like? What did you not like? And uh, overall, what you, what you think will happen in the final season of Falling Skies. Please hit that subscribe button and like and share this video. And uh, please keep up to date on all of my upcoming content as I will do be doing more recap and review videos regarding two shows uh zoo and scream the tv series i have seen the zoo series premiere and it was really promising and i still have not seen the scream tv series yet but i will be seeing it shortly and the second episode and the second episode of zoo so keep in mind i will do them as soon as i can as soon as i watch each episode all right you guys thank you so much again for watching and i hope you're enjoying these videos as much as i enjoy making them so thank you for subscribing and until next time may the force be with you